mind control is one of the, the tools that they use. How they get you in the uh, condition to be controlled is by using certain signs and symbols, frequencies, tones, colors, shapes, numbers that they hide subconsciously in the frequency of the music and in the 23rd frame, I believe, on TVs and the movies. Look at the movie going experience. We go in and we buy butter, popcorn, and coke. You're actually buying cocaine and you're buying this chemical called popcorn. Why do I call it a chemical? That butter is not really butter. But when you put it on the popcorn and you put it in the microwave, it becomes a chemical that lulls your subconscious mind to sleep. Inducing you and luring you to sleep so by the time you walk into a dark movie theater, you're already prepped. You're laying there, you're damn near dozing off. You're focusing in on a screen in the dark with the surround sound and they're attacking your subconscious mind with frequencies and images. Go to uh, The Arrivals on YouTube. The Arrivals. A-R-R-I-V-A-L-S. The Arrivals. Go to number 10 and watch it through number 12. And you'll see exactly how they pull this off. When you leave the movie theater, you're almost punch drunk. You leave the movie theaters with your breast filled, wanting to be the hero, or wanting to be the damn damsel in distress, wanting to be a corny white girl that fall down at every damn horror flick. Are you following me? So we have to understand it. So now to the small screen, they keep the small screen filled with nonsense. Channel Zero, I wrote a song with Public Enemy. Channel Zero is what we call it, which actually amounts uh, to absolutely nothing. I don't care if it's the daytime stories or these unreality shows or MTV Cribs, Pimp My Ride, or whatever. Absolute nonsense. If you watch cable, don't do it because one of the implementations is the box that you have to talk to get out for your cable TV. And that is one of the ways that they try to find out that um, certain sound waves can um, control you. So the, the, there are sound waves. <laughs> oh, bro. Yeah. There's sound waves that come out of the cable box. Well, that's all that comes out of your TV. That come out of your TV. That they can tweak it. They can tweak it to where they can make you feel sad. They can make you feel glad. You know how people have those those super harmonious CDs that pop and everything and they feel good. Yeah. No. Oh. They can play it for the exact same thing. Exact same thing. And it's very simple. It's very cheap. It works. And you, and, you, and you pay a monthly premium for it. You see, global corporations not only fund and develop large technological and military projects here and abroad, they also own the consumer industry and production, as well as all of the important media. By owning the vast majority of what we hear and see on a daily basis, we have been manipulated on a mass scale as to regards to what we believe and desire, both socially and politically. Edward Bernays, the nephew of world-famous psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud, would study group dynamics and become the father of public relations. He authored the book Propaganda in 1928. In it, he described how to intelligently and consciously manipulate the habits and opinions of the masses within a democratic society. He went on to state that those who harness this unseen mechanism of society constitute an invisible government and are the true ruling power. It is they who pull the wires which control the public mind, who harness old social forces and contrive new ways to bind and guide the world. The average American is distracted, mindless, worried about minuscule things, celebrities as if it was their own family members. And this is by design because the powers that be who own the media know how our brains work. They know scientifically how the human mind functions. They know about sociology and they are using the media and have used the media for decades now to entertain people with issues that don't really matter. When you have the big news networks covering celebrity issues as if it's the most important thing, it becomes the most important thing. And this is not by accident this is to keep us out of the way because if you're worried about the latest celebrity death or the latest celebrity couple or the celebrity breakup or your your sports team um, having a shot at the super bowl or the world series there's so much information about those issues that can be discussed 
that will mesmerize people and they won't know or care about the real issues that are out there. Well, I think this is just one more piece of evidence of the degree to which the media, supposedly the watchdogs, uh, has become the gatekeeper of the system. Mainstream media are, first of all, nearly all of them corporations, nearly all of them now publicly held, part of the whole Wall Street uh, financial system that they're supposed to report about objectively, but they can't. They, uh, right now, in uh, October of 2009, they are celebrating the recovery of the biggest banks in New York and saying that the recession is over. Of course, there are a few problems, like foreclosures are going on, unemployment is rising. All of this is affecting the American people. But it's not affecting the financial elite who also control the media. Bernays successfully identified the invisible empire which controlled the minds of men. So as the populace is mesmerized and hypnotized by powerful behind the scenes forces, as they are distracted by the latest celebrity scandal, the newest cell phone, and their favorite sports team, this network disguises itself, remaining in the shadows. Again, we see people of the highest levels of power involved in the most repulsive and decadent of crimes. They couldn't care less about the code of conduct that's taught in all major religions about treating others the way that you want to be treated. And then they masquerade, they put this false front on that they're like everybody else because your average person wants to do right, believes in some sort of a karma, believes in some sort of a divine uh, justice in the universe. And so these people need to put on this front that they're like the average Joe in middle America, that they go to church every once in a while, and that they believe in an afterlife and a divine justice. And so they have to put on this front that they're like everybody else in order to get elected and to be accepted and to not have people look at them suspiciously because if somebody goes around and openly admits that they were an atheist or that they were of some obscure religion, uh, people aren't going to throw their support behind them as much and they're not going to trust them as easily. The reality of this behavior is never revealed to the public, as the media keeps any revelations quiet. Unfortunately, these type of activities continue to this day. And those people who have been yelling, oh, the UN's going to take over global conspiracy government. Theorists. They conspiracy theorists. They've been crazy, but now they they're right. And find out what organization they belong to. And then it trickles down. You can find out what secret society they belong to. You know what team they are in a minute. That's, that's not hard to do. That's not how, all you got to do is a little bit, do a little bit of studying. Stop getting high and stop eating pork for a minute. Leave a damn concocted ass religion called Christianity alone for a minute and start doing some real studying and come out of the damn box. You, you can find out these things. This is not hard to figure out.